Hi, my name's Luke and I'm a senior developer at Spitfire. Today we're going to have a look through some of the different features of some of our libraries. Things like scale mode, the Evo grid, all the little things that give you a bit of inspiration when you first start writing. So let's get stuck in. So the first library I'm going to have a look at is Mercury. So this library is really, really great for sound design. It's really, really great for atmospheric writing, anything that sounds a bit otherworldly. And it's great for just getting started if you want to lay down sort of a, a droney paddy sound, or if you want some extra oomph with a hit or something like that, or to add some tension to a certain moment. Really, really cool. So I've loaded up a preset called Bass Tweed Fever. Now this one's very useful and a good example of how this library works, how the eDNA engine works. First, let's have a look at the interface. On the left here, we've got the preset base tweed bend to core, and on the right, we've got base tweed bend to cascade. Now these have very different sounds, and what we can do, just to listen to each individually, I'm gonna bring the mod wheel down and you'll see the oscillator here is on the left. This corresponds to this side of the interface. So what we'll be hearing here is this core sound in isolation. And on the right here, we have the cascade. So let's just listen to that with the same note, but you can hear the difference between the two. So when you use these in combination with each other, this is what they sound like. So what I'm gonna do is bring the mod wheel down and that's gonna oscillate or bring the oscillator down with it and crossfade between the two layers. And you can hear how that's working there. There's a few other really useful features on here as well. You can mess around with things like the pitch and this is where it can get quite experimental. There's all these different effects on uh, this page as well. You can turn on and off for each, uh, each bay. It's worth thinking of these as bays. So you can see here, this is your bay A and this is your bay B. You can change the presets too if you want to mix that up. Absolutely not a problem. But I'm gonna keep these as, as they are for now and I'm just gonna experiment with changing things here. So I'm gonna right click on pitch here. I'm gonna click learn MIDI CC and I'm gonna add a fader to this. There you go. So what that will do is modulate the pitch. So this is really cool. And uh, because I'm working on this bay here, I'm just gonna keep this on the left-hand side there. So I'm just hearing this in isolation whilst I mess around with the sound. So let's have a look at what I've done here. If I just press a key. So <laughs> as you can see, it can get quite creative uh, and quite fun. So I'm just going to play that note now with that pitch set to one and brought up a little bit there and you'll hear what that's doing. Now for me, that release is a little bit too long. So I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. You can see that was at six seconds. So let's bring that down to two seconds and just have a play of that quickly. And again, we're gonna to wanna to bring the mod wheel down because we're working on bay A at the moment. And there you go, sounds great. So in isolation, that could sound quite strange, but the, the bonus of using it in the eDNA engine is that it's, it's working with other sounds at the same time. So what I can do, is bring the mod wheel up and then crossfade down. And then you'll hear that over the top pitch warping going on, but it just adds an element and it's subtle. I don't have to go all the way down. I can just dip into that layer a little bit and it can really change the sound and add an element of sort of intensity. It depends on the sound, but you can add a lot of different effects basically. And there you go. So what else can we do in the eDNA engine? There's filter over here, there's volume. All of these things can be modulated and warped. You can add uh, high pass filters or low pass filters. And obviously, as you've just seen, I can mess with the release as well. So very useful. Um, all these controls here, the tune, the panning, you can change it in the stereo image, uh, as well as that offset the note and a volume trim too. There's other things here like glide too for when you move between notes. So let me just enable that quickly and I'll just uh, show you what that does. There you go. So when you move between notes, it's almost a legato effect in a way. It's, it sort of connects the two notes. As well as that, one other thing you can do is oscillate the mixer automatically. So if you enable this here, this is effectively you moving the mod wheel up and down uh, and it syncs to tempo in your DAW as well. So if I press this key, this is gonna sound 
quite crazy because it's going to go between the two like that. But you can hear how that's useful, especially uh, for things like risers. Sounds like that, where if you add a volume fade at the same time, which I'll do, I'll show you that with a volume fade. And you imagine fading that up in a track with some automation up to a, a big build of a section or something like that. It's it's very sound designy, and it's just this is the very first preset I've loaded basically. So very cool to just play around with, mess around with the effects, and get something that's more unique and uh, to your tastes. So let's just uh, show you that with the expression. So that's the volume there that will fade up and down there. Uh, and I don't need to move the mod wheel anymore because I've got oscillate mixer on. So that will do that automatically for me. So I can just focus on fading this in. Yeah. You can also change the speed of the oscillation. So here we're at one time, so that is going to match the tempo on our DIW. Uh, if I bring it down, this is going to be an awful lot faster. Let's have a go like this. Yeah, absolutely crazy. And again, I'm just going to change the release on that there. It's a little bit too long for my liking. Um, and let's just have a play again. Right, and that pitch there is obviously the lowest it will go. Uh, so let me just bring that up a little bit and slow down first the oscillation and then the pitch a little bit as well. Yeah, crazy. You, you can just change so much stuff and it will just completely transform the sound, which is really, really cool. So why did we create the eDNA engine? Uh, the, the reasoning behind that is hopefully proven in the examples I've just given, but it's more about how you can take source material and just warp it into something completely different. Create something that is very unique, you know, it's to your own preference. Um, and, you know, you can almost guarantee that the sounds that you create in this, if you uh, mess around enough, that no one else is going to have created that exact same sound. And that's the beauty of this, uh, this engine, really. It just gives you a lot of control right on the interface. And if you find something that you really love, you can just save a preset by uh, going up here and saving that and that will save that as a custom preset which uh, you can then refer back to so if you find something you mess around for a long time find something you really like go ahead and save that and you can recall that at a later date you might create the perfect riser in your eyes uh, something that you just want to use all the time and you can just go back and use that again so that's really useful so let's next have a look at fractured strings um, this library is really really great for just when you're first starting out writing a piece, you know, you've just opened your DAW and you need some inspiration. There's some really cool features in this library. Uh, and the first we're going to have a look at is called scale mode. So let's open up scale mode. And you can do this by opening any technique that has scale mode in its name. So you can see here, I've got the violin dispersals and they are in scale mode. So what I'm going to do is click this little part of the interface here and that will go into scale mode. Now we're starting out in C major, as you can see, and these little keys here correspond to the notes. So that would be your C, that would be your C sharp, D, and so on. So let's just have a play and just show you what this sounds like first. And there you go, so that's in C major, but let's have a play and see what scale mode can change. So let's go into, uh, let's go D minor, shall we? Uh, the saddest of all the keys, uh, and let's just play with that. And by the way, velocity uh, does matter here. The, the higher velocity you play, the, the larger the interval. So let's just show you that quickly. And then if I play soft, you can hear that that interval is not quite as loud. And so it's that rocking motion that's really, really hard to create uh, in general sort of orchestral sample libraries. It's You need the, the recordings. It's just very, very difficult to get that stuff right. And that's what this library is so great at. Um, so let's just have a play uh, now in D minor.
So you can see that we can create some really interesting textures and uh, almost clashing notes in places as well. Let's just mess around uh, with the scales a little bit more here. Let's go into F sharp uh, and let's go Phrygian, shall we? So play a few notes here. And what I really love about this is that you can almost hit any key and it's going to create something that sounds quite interesting. There's almost like, it seems like a contradiction, but a freedom in the limitation that scale mode adds. It just, when you're first starting out writing something, not having an overwhelming, there's just absolutely everything here. It kind of limits you to the this key, this scale, uh, and just play around and see if you get inspired. So you can go from something that even sounds quite quite ominous, but then to something that sounds really beautiful. It's It, it really changes um, just depending on the key, but also the notes that you play in scale mode. Um, and again, you don't have to think too much. I uh, Right now, I could kind of just let my hands fall on the keyboard uh, and let's see how this sounds. And I'm gonna purposely play the two left keys a little bit softer, so those intervals are less of a jump. And then I'm gonna play the higher key a bit harder so that that rocking motion is jumping between larger intervals. And let's just see how that sounds. Now this is almost like uh, rubbing your belly and uh, patting your head or whatever it is at the same time. So I'm gonna have to think about this, but let's just try. So again, let's just listen to those bottom two. And then I'm gonna press that, that higher key a bit louder. You can see how that works. So it's very fun, very cool. So just to show you once more how scale mode is switching between those, let's say I'm in C and I'm just gonna play a fifth. And then I'm gonna go to D. And then again, hitting the keys harder to change those intervals to be larger. And you can also mess around with the timing that you hit the keys. You know, you don't have to hit everything at the same time. You're going to get some really interesting sort of interlocked sounding phrases. So let me space this out here. So you can almost imagine the really interesting textures that you can create there. So let's now have a look at the Evo grid. So the Evo grid works by putting in these little pins on the interface. At first it can be a little bit daunting, but let me just run through a very brief overview. So these pins here correspond to a key, as you can see here, C sharp two, E two, G two, and the pin corresponds to a statement in this case, so a different type of statement. And then if you scroll up here, you can see I can select rotation so that one key has a different sound on it, so a rotation instead of those statements, and then dispersal. So all of the different techniques there are mapped in the Evo grid. So let's first just have a look at statements here, which is the default. So I've loaded up statements and you can see how that's working. If I play. And you can see as I'm playing there, when I play a note, you can see what I'm triggering on the Evo grid, so that will light up. So let's have a play around with some of the preset stuff here. We can change to feeling lucky, which will just completely randomize all of the pins here. So you can see there, I've got that one lone dispersal, and if I press E2, that triggers that. So when you do this, completely random, you can get some really interesting stuff. Uh, so if I just play here, you can hear that there's an element of something else in there. We've got that rocking motion in there in the background. So let's have a look at statements. And these pins here in the statements, they're changing the intervals. So basically, if I were to set them all to one, 
which you can do by the way, uh, command click or alt click um, on Windows will basically select all of the pins in that line. So I can set all of these to the exact same there. And you can hear that's that's the same note basically. So if I wanted it to go up to a minor second, And so you can see there, you can actually create some really cool stuff. You can have it so that your your G, any of your Gs have a different interval in there. And same, let's say the A sharps as well. Let's just click around and see what we can come up with. Uh, almost making a pattern here. Worth noting these last two notes there, they are locked to that because they're just at the very top of the range and that's the only intervals that the instruments could reach at that point, basically. Um, so let's just play once more. One thing I do like to do is uh, to play, almost overlap the, the notes intentionally, you know, trigger them and then trigger another note very quickly and you'll get that kind of that clashing motion. Really cool. Uh, it just creates this really interesting texture. If I uh, delay a little bit more before I press the next note. Really, really fun. Um, and again, there's just all sorts you can do here. You, can, you don't have to play uh, with multiple voices at once. You can just go around hitting keys uh, individually and it can still create some really interesting sounds. go. Uh, whatever you hit, you can just create some really fun stuff. And let's just have a look at one more here. Let's go for the pizzicato strums. So those are at the very top there, but you can see at the top of the range here, uh, it will be these uh, because of the range of the, the techniques. So this is interesting now because on the left hand side of the keyboard, we have something percussive with the pizzicato strums. And on the right, we have those statements. So you can see how the keyboard is split here as well. So from C, that's where I'll be hitting those statements. So bearing that in mind, what can I do? Well, I can play something relatively percussive in the left hand and then just bearing that in mind, have a play around with the split at the keyboard and then uh, those, those statements at the top. So something like, And uh, one more thing I'm just going to do is I'm going to load up the dispersals here uh, and I'm just going to have a play around with the stereo image of each individual one. Let's go left, right, left, right, all the way down. So each of these is going to have a unique panning basically and it's going to create a really interesting stereo image. So let's just have a play of that. So this is just the dispersals here that will have the panning changed. And at the bottom there, you could see those statements uh, are still as they were. So let's now have a look at Orchestral Swarm. So this library is recorded in a really unique way, but it creates such great textures. And it's recorded by having multiple players in a space playing almost different percussive in some ways, but almost just intervallic and different times, things like that. And it's kind of creates this really interesting texture. So I'm just gonna have a look at the Flautando Swarm patch and let's just see how that sounds. Thank you. 
And there you go. So you can almost hear there, if I just play a single note. You can almost hear that weaving in and out. And that's uh, a really unique thing that you often won't get texturally. Um, it's just really, really beautiful and just creates something quite special. So let's move to something a little bit more shorts oriented. Uh, and I'm gonna have a look at the pizzicato swarm. So this is, as you can imagine, lots of players are playing pizzicato, but at different times, it creates just a texture of pizzicato, something really, really unique. So how I like to use this is almost just treat it as a layer in the background, a texture. So what I've done here now is I've loaded up two presets. So I've basically got a string ensemble here. I've got strings low and string high, and I'm uh, playing on the Whisper Swarm. And let's just hear how this sounds in combination. So obviously I have the full range of the keyboard now. Uh, and this is the kind of thing that's just really fun to sketch with, really unique textures. Yeah, really, really fun, really unique sounds and just great for setting up that sort of that bed at the beginning of a track, anything. Uh, you know, I've heard uh, a lot of examples uh, of this stuff used uh, and it's just, yeah, just really, really inspiring. Another really useful technique here is the short swarms. So I like to play these in the higher range and then just fade them up from the softest dynamic and then just almost imagine like a lower sweeping cello melody coming in or something like that. It's just really useful to, to have these high sustained string sounds in there with this really cool textures, uh, more than your standard sustain basically. So here's an example of uh, how I'd use Orchestral Swarm and then just create a melody beneath that sound being held. So it's really useful uh, just for saying that texture bed um, at the beginning of a track. So even something as simple as that in fifths and then if you move over to something like this, Let's just bring that level up so that it sounds a little bit more in line. So that's just an example. Uh, you can play any melody beneath that, but it just helps you to sort of build up this, this structure at the very beginning, um, just using some of those sustained swarm sounds. Lastly, we're gonna have a look at Hans Zimmer Percussion, and this uses something called the Kickstart engine. We actually have a, a new version of the Kickstart engine out in the Spitfire Symphony Orchestra. So this is currently using the older iteration, but the behavior is uh, mostly the same. So what I like to do with this library is first just have a play around and find the sounds that you like, because right now, by default, everything is loaded up in front of you. So you can hear there, we've got quite a few things uh, just across those, that small range of keys there. But what I'm gonna do in Kickstart here is almost just completely change the layout and make it something that is more unique to, to perhaps what I'd want. So. So I want a snare, where do I want that? I'm gonna map my snares to C. So what's been below the snares there? That'll be these. So I'm just gonna go onto those and I'm gonna purge those. And you can see there, those, those keys, those darbukas have now disappeared. So if I play the keys here, there's no sound. 
So on the snare here, um, say that I want to move this D4 hit over to the C here, which I'm pressing. All you'd have to do is click on the hit here, hit C, and that has moved that now. Uh, and there's other things you can do as well. Like say, I, I often like to use the, the black keys with percussion. So let's just find something that I want to move onto those. So I'm going to have a look at the these here, the Joels, and I'm going to move them up to here. So let's say, first let's have a play and find which ones we want to move. So there's a nice stick hit there, and I'm going to click that, and let's move that. I'm going to keep that and put that in, on a white key in the D there. So now I've got a snare here, and that, that hit there. And then let's say, these three I want to move, so I'm going to move that up, I'm going to move that up, I'm going to move that up. So now I can almost do some, some crossover hand stuff if I want. So that's how you move the notes in the Kickstart engine. Uh, obviously it can be entirely to your taste, so I've done something relatively random there. Uh, and the default setup, if that works for you, is completely fine. But again, you know, you can just see as you move through the keys by the colours, how those work. Fun. Very fun. So whilst we're here in uh, Kickstart, there are some other controls uh, specific to Hans Zimmer percussion here. Things like the boom and the crack. Let's have a listen to those. So let's just first find something that will add a little bit of boom. There, that would be great. So let's bring that up. You can hear what that's doing there. It's making it more, almost more of a sub sound. Uh, and then on contrast, So that was just a brief overview of some of our unique interface features and hopefully now it makes sense of why we've created them, you know, the things like the scale mode, how that limits you but almost frees you up in a way as well. You know, you're limited to a scale on a certain key and that just can really help to, to kickstart, pun not intended, uh, to kickstart the process basically, the writing process, which is often the hardest part, you know, we talk about blank page, you first open your DAW, this is why we've created these features really. And libraries like Orchestral Swarm as well, which are obviously recorded in a way to immediately be inspiring and help you just get something down right away and uh, enjoy writing.